Hello and welcome to Malmakes. Today we're painting Koopa Troopa Beach from Mario Kart 64. This is the full version. If you're interested in the time lapse, you can click on the card here. Otherwise, let's get started. I've played a lot of Mario Kart 64, and one of my most fondest memories of it was when I was in Girl Scouts. We did a lock-in at the local YMCA, and we played Mario Kart all night. And um, Koopa Troopa Beach was always one of my favorites, just because it was so tropical, and I thought it was really pretty, and I always wanted to go somewhere like this, where it had like the natural stone arch in the ocean. Um, so that's kind of where I'm drawing my inspiration from for this one. Um, I always thought this part was really cool with the shortcut through the little bit of lagoon behind this. Um, so I decided to do this part specifically, like this turn of the track. Um, so I've kind of moved the camera out here over the ocean and up just a little bit. And what I'm going to start with is drawing in my horizon line so I have an idea. And that's about like a third or a fourth from the top. So I'm going to use my T-square and draw that line in, and then we'll start filling in the sky and the clouds. I've only drawn in a little bit of horizon line, um, so I'm just gonna kind of generally paint this way and kind of guess. The rocks are gonna come down pretty extremely and cover this, so I'm not worried about kind of needing to make sure it gets all the way down to this line over here. Now for the colors, I've mixed up a light cyan with titanium white and cyan. Um, and it has a lot of cyan in it, so it's kind of more on the cyan side. And then I mixed up another one with a lot more titanium white, so it's lighter, and that's going to go here. And I'm just going to do a grading in between and try and make sure I get down to this line. When I do this, I like to start with the light color, because I find I do a better job blending then. So I'm putting the light cyan titanium white mixed down, and I'm going right to that line. And it's okay if I go a little bit below, because when I do the C part, I'm gonna make a nice, straight, perfect line there. But the sky doesn't matter so much because I'm doing that first. And then I can take the darker blue and start to put that down up here. And I'm just going to keep painting until it's pretty solid and then blend it down into this lighter color. I'm happy with the gradient, so I'm just going to switch over to a smaller brush and use some titanium white to start to bring in some cloud shapes. I'm doing this a little painterly, so I'm just taking a round brush and just starting to kind of tap in these clouds and doing it in kind of like a swirl motion. My colors are kind of turning into the light blue, like the one down here, just because it's titanium white mixing into this darker blue. So like as I kind of finish up, I'm just getting more and more titanium white and just kind of touching it in on some of these highlights here. From this point, there are two ways I could go. Um, I could paint my normal background to foreground, um, which I like doing, and in order to do that, what I would have to do is save all of the blue color I do for the background part of the water here, because this part of the water up here is actually foreground. Um, so I have to save the background blue so I can use it here when I get to that point. Um, and that's not a problem, I can easily do that um, by keeping it under plastic wrap when I'm not using it. But the other thing I can do is take a chalk pastel pencil and start to mark in all of my lines and decide exactly where I want things to go on the canvas and then block it in with a solid base layer, um, like a dark brown for the rock, a tan for the sand, and a solid blue for the water. And after everything's just blocked in where it's going to sit, I can go back and do my normal background to foreground but only detail and start to fill in shadows and like textures as I do background to foreground. Out of those two options, I'm going the route of drawing things in with chalk pastel, blocking them in with a solid color, and then working background to foreground with detail and value. Um, so what I need to do first is find my horizon line, which I just did, um, and I did that by taking my T-square and just finding a spot where um, I don't have any raw canvas showing over here because this is the part where I'm going to see the horizon. And then I drew in a line with the chalk pastel just all the way across my canvas. And then I'm going to take some painter's tape, and this is just regular house painter's tape that you would find um, at a store. And this is frog tape, I really like this brand because I find it removes cleanly from my acrylic. Um, and then I'm going to take a piece and put it right above my line because I'm painting underneath it for the ocean. So I'm going to find a spot over here 
and then just kind of stick it a little bit along each one of these parts and wrap it around the side of the canvas and then push it down. Now I find if I just kind of lightly push it down, sometimes the paint when I paint underneath here seeps up underneath and then makes like a tiny little bubble and then I don't have a nice straight line. So I find that if I do this and then take my fingernail and just kind of scratch it along the edge to really make sure it's stuck, I don't have that problem as much. Um, so that's something you can do to make sure that it's really stuck on your canvas. The colors I'm using to block in are really close to what I want them to be um, after I finish everything else. Um, if they're too different, it's kind of hard to do the next layers. So I'm using a blue-green for the ocean because I want it to be a little bit more green than my sky is. To make my sand color, um, what I did is I took burnt sienna, which is actually kind of more of a red-brown color, and I wanted to make it a little bit more orange, so I added some yellow to it. But then it was really intense, really bright, so I took a little bit of cyan, which is opposite of orange on the color wheel, to bring down the intensity, and then I mixed all of that into some titanium white. So that's my new sand color, and I'm just going to fill in all of the areas with sand. The last three areas I have to block in are the face of this rock, the faraway face of this rock under here, and then the underside of the arch. So I need to make sure all three are different colors because all three touch. If I paint them the same, um, I'm going to lose where the line is somewhere. So like if these are the same, I'm going to lose this line. If the far away one and the close up one are the same, there's a little bit here where they touch and I won't see where that is either. Um, so I took some burnt umber and I mixed it in with some Mars black to do the underside here. Um, for the far away one, I made up a light gray with titanium white and Mars black and mixed that into the burnt umber. And then out here, it's just going to be burnt umber by itself. I've done a little bit of testing deciding exactly how I want to do the ocean. I have these three colors right here and I had tested um, this one over here on the actual canvas. Now this lightest blue right here is going to be right along my horizon and it's going to very quickly fade back into the medium blue which is my base color. And then as I get closer to the shore, um, there's a little bit of a chalk line that I've drawn. It's going to fade into this light greenish blue color. So it's going to kind of be this gradient through the entire ocean. The ocean is getting there, but I can't do any more until I do the sand, and I can't do the sand until I do everything else. Um, so the next thing I want to do is this little bit of rock face that sits out here on the other side of the lagoon. It's the part that has that little circle where you can jump in for the shortcut. Um, so I'm going to start by painting it dark, um, a dark color like this. The way I'm doing the value and the texture is very similar to how I did it on the Zebus painting. Um, I'm starting with the dark shadow color, and I'm going to tap in the medium and then also the highlight, and I'm doing that with small pieces of sea sponge. Now I've gotten these damp so they're flexible, but they're not dripping wet, they're just a little bit damp. So I'm going to go into my mid color here, which is just a gray um, with burnt umber, and I'm going to tap a little bit of the sponge into it just so I have a little bit here. And then I'm going to come over to the canvas and decide where I'm starting to have the highlights. And I'm going to just start tapping it in a little bit just to bring in that texture. Then I'm picking up another small piece of sea sponge with a lighter color, which is just the same thing, but with more white and more burnt umber in it. And I'm going to tap that in where I want these highlights to go. 
I did this rock first so I could kind of paint everything else around it and by doing that clean up the lines um, because the um, sponge motion does kind of make a mess. So I think that the sand color is too dark. I want it to be lighter, um, more like bright white sand in the sun. So I've taken that same color I had and I've just lightened it up with some more titanium white. So it looks a little bit more like this. And I'm going to use that to fill in the sand up here. And this color itself I think is too light to be the dark color um, for my shadow or where the sand is wet. So I still have this color but with less titanium white in it. And that's what I'm going to use for my shadow and for the wet sand. I decided the sand needed to be a lot lighter, so I took my base color and added some more titanium white to it, and then I just repainted all of that in. Um, I also took this base color and blended it to the teal, um, just because when the water is really like shallow, you can see the sand underneath, so you do see some of this color underneath the water. Um, the next thing I want to do is take a chalk pastel and start to figure out where the waves are going to come into the shore here. Next I'm going to work on this front rock. So I've taped off the underside of it here where it's going to be really, really dark. And I used this tape and I forget what it's called, but um, it's kind of like this curved artist tape. So it kind of does a little bit of a curve. Um, it can't do really extreme curves, but just this gentle curve I have here for this rock face, it does really good with that. Um, so just like I use painter's tape, I make sure I stick it down really good and then run my fingernail on it to make sure it's really stuck. Um, and then I'm going to fill this in solid Mars black just because it's the underside of this here and it's an extreme shadow. So I want to make sure it's really dark. With the solid black in here, I can do the same thing I did over here with these rocks on top of this. Now because it is in shadow, I'm definitely not going as light as I did over here, um, but I definitely want there to be some texture. It's going to look a little bit strange. So I'm just going to use this small old brush and take the darkest color I had from over here and just tap in a little bit of texture just so it's barely noticeable. So you can see all of these ruffles and this is why I don't use the green tape to curve. Um, that's why I do the blue and then use the green to make a buffer. This texture really isn't working out, but the great thing about acrylic painting is you can paint right over the top of things and try something different.
Rocks always trip me up when I'm painting them, but I feel like every time I do them, I get better and better each time. And I'm really happy with how these ones turned out. Um, basically what I did is I started with a chalk pastel pencil and blocked in the shape of each of these rocks. I started to think about where I wanted them to go, how it would make sense. And then I took kind of my medium color. And on top of the very dark color I had done the whole thing in, is I went right along each chalk line and kind of filled in each surface, letting the brush naturally run out of paint so it kind of um, did a dry brushing technique on top. After I did that, I went to a lighter color and did the same thing just on the very tips where um, I want the highlight to go. And then I did in a color even brighter than that with more titanium white. And that one you can see just on the very, very tips of some of these. I also took Mars Black and did um, a little bit of a darker color in some of these areas just to kind of push them back a little bit and make them more in shadow. I did the same thing for under the arch, I just used less of the highlight colors and it worked out really well. Um, so I'm happy with how that turned out and the next thing I want to do is start to work on this surf. So I've drawn in some waves that come in, I have ones that are um, going into the shore and then I have some that are like receding back. And what I'm doing is I'm taking titanium white on a small brush and I'm going to kind of fill in some foam here on the edge of this wave. I'm not trying to make the waves really big, um, they're just gonna be very gently kind of coming into the beach. Now the first way I did the waves I wasn't really thrilled about. Um, I think I just had too many and they were overlapping too much. So I just repainted this part because I thought the rest of it looked fine. And then I just brought one continuous wave in, um, just using some titanium white right on top of that line. I brought in some extra waves that are kind of further out. And then right on that edge where that dark sand was, I put a little bit more titanium white. And then I used the same dark color for the shadow to kind of shade underneath all of that foam, just so it looks like it's sitting on the sand. And that worked out really good. Um, and then I sketched in these ramps here with a chalk pastel, and I filled the solid parts in white because it's going to be yellow and red, and yellow is very transparent. And if I don't do that, it won't show up as bright. Um, so the next thing I'm gonna do is do all of the side pieces for it. And I'm going to use Burnt Umber and Burnt Sienna for that. It's really important when doing these ramps that um, the top and bottom line are parallel to each other and the outside two edges. Um, and that's what makes them look like they actually sit in space. I noticed this one's a little bit off so I fixed it. And also because it's the smallest one and it's furthest away, it's really hard to make sure that zigzag is right. Um, so I'm just going to be very carefully trying it again. And if I have to, it's really easy to repaint it in white and then yellow and then try it again in red. And um, for the red, I'm using a liquid naphthol red light. And I like to use the liquid paints when I'm doing something really small because I have a lot more control over it. I'm not trying to push so much mass of a heavy body paint into such a small space. This just flows a lot better when I'm working tiny. The 
That faraway ramp is still giving me some trouble, but I think I managed to get it pretty close. I used some titanium white like white out to fix it, and once that's dry, I'll go back with yellow and red to kind of touch it up and make it look perfect. In the meantime, I'm moving on to the palm trees. I've marked in all of these ridges on both tree trunks and then the fronds on the smaller, further away one just to kind of start to see where they are. Now I'm using a color I made with burnt sienna mixed with um, a dark gray. And that dark gray I made with Mars black and titanium white. And then on the left side of all of these, I'm starting to bring in this dark color. And I'm trying to start like on the left of each one of these little rectangle areas and work my way towards the bottom right corner because the top right corner is going to be where all the highlight is so it's going to kind of be opposite and come together like this on each one of those little rectangles. I'm going to build up these tree trunks um, for the value and texture just like I did the rocks. I'm moving into a lighter and lighter color each time and doing more and more highlight. So this is the same three colors as the last layer, the Burnt Sienna, um, Titanium White, and Mars Black. It just has more white in it and more Burnt Sienna. And I'm going to kind of start going from the right now because that's where the highlight is going to hit and kind of fade it into the stuff on the left, staying near the top of each of these rectangles. The fronds of the palm tree um, I did in chalk pastel first and then I switched to a black paint marker and went on the ridges on the middle piece of those. Once that's dry I'm going to take chalk and start to mark in each individual part of it and I'm going to move into a blue green and do all of it in blue green first. And then I'm going to move into a lighter yellow green and do the highlights like I did on this one back here. Also, the shadows on the sand, I'm using that same dark sand color, and I started by doing an ellipse on this one, but it didn't feel right, especially with those fronds coming so far off the palm, so I just kind of stretched them, kind of like where each one of the palms is, just to kind of make it look natural. And I'm going to do the same on this one, so I've marked it in on chalk first. Um, and then for the last thing I have to do for the moss, um, the N64 version of this um, course has moss that sits right on the arch and I like it because it brings attention to that curve. Right now it's kind of lost especially with these rocks far away here. Um, they're kind of competing for attention but if I bring the moss it'll be a nice natural barrier color wise between the two. Um, in Mario Kart 7 when they have the remake there's no greenery on the rocks at all. It's just some grass that sit on the top and I kind of drew it in just a little bit to see if I would like it and I like this a lot more. So I'm going to have kind of this hanging natural moss and I'm going to have it kind of coming down and hanging off just a little bit here. Um, and what I want to do first is I want to take the white paint marker and block in the top. And I followed these rocks just to give it this natural kind of progression around this. And then I've kind of just hung it off individual pieces of rock over here and over here. And then I'm going to take some of the Mars Black um, in the paint marker and do the bottom so I can see where it hangs down um, covering some of this stuff.
Now for this moss or algae, um, it's really similar to how I did the palm fronds where I'm marking it in with the blue green first and then I'm moving into a lighter color. But this one I moved into more of a yellow green and for this part I'm going to stay kind of on the blue green side. I'm just going to lighten it up with white instead of yellow. And we're done! We have Koopa Troopa Beach from Mario Kart 64. If you're interested in this piece, you could buy a poster or a phone case, or bid on this original canvas. There's links down below. Also, consider supporting me on Patreon. You can find out more at supportmal.com. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes of Mal Makes, and I'll see you again here for another video game painting. <laughs>